Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My friends call me Mer. So, I have already done this video, but it was boring as... Okay, so guys, this section is like super boring. <laughs> so, I'm restarting it. Bear with me, okay? We are at chapter five. If you remember, they are just coming back from Jerusalem, back to the tent of Lehi. This might be a bad idea. <laughs> Lehi, you visionary man, you send my babies out to the wilderness where they might be killed and now we're buzzard food. Yeah, I know I'm a visionary man. If I wasn't a visionary man, I wouldn't know the goodness of God. So I know that the Lord will deliver our boys back to us out of the hands of Laban with the records that the Lord so desperately wants us to have and to bring into the wilderness and to this promised land. Imagine how relieved Sariah was when her babies came back. Oh, this lighting is Terrible. And so she said, now I know that the Lord is with us and he chose my husband to be a seer and that he chose my family. So then they came back and they brought the plates of brass that they got from Le Laban. Then Lehi opens these plates. He sees that there are five books of Moses and that has the law of Moses. Ten! Ten commandments! And it has the Torah, right? So it has the record of Adam and Eve and the records of the holy prophets. And he sees his family tree and he sees that he's a direct descendant of Joseph. And he has a revelation. These plates are gonna go forth to every kindred, language, every nation, and all the people of his seed. And it turns out that Laban was like basically a distant cousin of theirs because he was also direct descendant of Joseph. And Nephi says, so far, they have kept all the commandments that God has given them. So that's pretty great. So you know that they're going to be blessed for that. Chapter 6. I really love this chapter just because it's very sincere. Just ignore my... Yeah, I had to close my garden. We're October right now. But the tomatoes are still doing good, so that's pretty great. All right, come on, focus. I'm just going to paraphrase it. He said that he's, he's just not going to write about the whole genealogy of his family just because his dad is going to do it in his own record. But just to say that he's a descendant of Joseph is, you know, good enough for him. And plus, he doesn't want to take up space where the information is already going to be put somewhere else, right? So he wants to write about his own experiences with miracles of God, and he wants to bring people to God. He doesn't want to write about things about the world, about like what's going on. He just wants to write about his own experiences and he knows that this record will be passed on and stuff like that. He leaves a commandment to his future children to not fill the plates with anything else, just spiritual stuff. Just their their testimonies, their experiences with God. Chapter 7. So, Lehi, I'm a gardener. <laughs> just ignore that. I built all this, by the way. The trellises in the garden, I built, ignore that, ignore that. That's a closed part of the garden and I'm lazy. Okay, so Lehi said, okay guys, guess what? God told me to send you guys back to Jerusalem to get yourself some wives. So go see Ishmael and get his daughters and bring them out here too. So then they go, so they travel all the way back up to Jerusalem. And if you look, like this is kind of where we think where Lehi's tent was camped. So imagine walking all this way back up for the second time, crazy. They must be so bored. So yeah, then it took like a long time for Nephi to convince Ishmael to come. But after a while of talking about like, you know, his testimony and his experiences, then Ishmael's heart was softened and he was like, okay, fine, we'll go with you. So Laman and Lemuel, they married their wives right away and brought two sons of Ishmael and their families. And then they all started walking into the uh, wilderness. But anyway, so Laman and Lemuel and their two wives and um, two of the sons of Ishmael and their families, they all rebelled against Nephi and they were like complaining. They're like, well, Jerusalem is obviously fine. Let's just go back. This is ridiculous. We have all these, you know, we have our house, our friends, and why, why are we leaving? I don't understand. So they rebelled. They, they rebelled against Nephi, Sam, three of Ishmael's daughters, Ishmael and his wife, because they were, they were all faithful. But Laman and Lemuel and them, they were like, let's go back to Jerusalem. I don't want to stay here in the wilderness. This is too hard. Fair. <laughs> then Nephi was obviously heartbroken because like it took all this convincing and Laman and Lemuel, why am I blurry? Um, so like then Nephi, he gives them like, an earful. He was like, how, how is it that I always have to keep talking to you? How is it that like 
You've seen an angel. How, how come it's so hard to convince you about God? Why are you so stubborn that you need your little brother to like look after you and tell you, and tell you to repent and set an example for you? Why, is, why am I blurry? How have you already forgotten that we've seen an angel and that like we were delivered from the hands of Laban when he so clearly wanted to kill us and we brought the plates of brass? Isn't that sign enough for you that God loves us and God is there with us if we're faithful? Let's be faithful. The Lord's promise of Jerusalem being destroyed will come true because they have completely ignored all of the prophets. They've put Jeremiah in prison and they wanted to kill our father, which made us come out here in the first place. They're not getting any better. So for sure, Jerusalem will be destroyed. But you have a choice now. You can stay and remember the words that I'm telling you right now. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? And be faithful and come with us to the land of promise. Or you can go back to Jerusalem and die. And they got mad, super mad. And they wanted to kill him. So they tied him up and they were gonna leave him to be eaten by a wild animal. But then Nephi prayed, God, according to my faith which is in me, can you please give me the strength that I can burst free out of these bands by which I'm bound? And just as he said those words, look, the bands were loosed from his hands and feet and he was able to get up and he, he walked up to Laman and Lemuel and then they got mad again. How? How? And they wanted to kill him again. But then one of the daughters of Ishmael and Ishmael's wife and a son pleaded with Laman and Lemuel to let him go. And it's off in their hearts. And, and then they stopped trying to kill him. And they felt so bad that they, they bowed before Nephi and they said, please forgive us. And Nephi was like, it's okay, we're all good, it's cool. You should probably, uh, you know, ask for forgiveness from the big guy up there. So then after they had prayed for God to forgive them, they got up and they continued their journey back down to Lehi's tent in the Valley of Lemuel. When they finally made it back, they gave thanks to the Lord and offered a sacrifice and burnt offerings. And see. So what I really appreciate from this part was how Nephi, he prayed that the Lord would give him the strength to break through the bands from which he was bound, right? But instead, God loosened the bands for him. And I love that because the Lord gave him something that was greater. Sometimes that happens, that we pray for something and it's not exactly what we wanted. But think of it, like wouldn't it be better if the bands were loose instead of him having like to force through and break it and maybe like injure his arm or something like that? Like there was uh, one time when I was, I, I was going to the metro and I needed to park my car and I was praying like, please Heavenly Father, please let there be a spot for me by the metro so I don't have to go inside the terminal and pay for parking. I drove by the street where normally there would be parking and there was no parking so I was like okay I guess I'm gonna have to pay for parking. So I go into the terminal and then I go to that little uh, guichet. The, um, I, so I go to the little machine where you can like put in your credit card and you pay for the parking ticket right but then I see these people and they say hey we already paid for the whole day and we're leaving right now so do you want our ticket? So even though I prayed for the parking spot, the Lord gave me something greater. Thank you for coming back to my channel. Thank you for bearing with me. I promise that it picks up and it gets very intense from here on out. I testify in these truths. See you next time.